Hey guys, it's Dr. J. Marr, and uh, let's talk about B12 today. Vitamin B12 is a big one that I, I have to talk about a lot in my practice, and um, I guess that's why you know I want to get some of my thoughts down on video here for you guys and, and see you, what you guys think. Um, and B12 is getting a lot more attention, I think, these days. I mean, I mean, I live and work in, in Vancouver, uh, in Canada, where we are you know, as a culture really focused on moving towards more of a plant-based diet. Um, and I'm, I'm certainly a, a huge proponent for that. I think a couple things about that, I think, you know, plant-based diets doesn't, don't necessarily mean plants only. Um, and so that's a big thing that I want to, I'll probably go into in more detail in another, in another video. I want to focus on B12 here today. Um, but in more of a plant-based diet, or if we are fully um, committed to a vegan diet or even a more vegetarian diet, it can be very difficult to get three important nutrients. Um, protein as a macronutrient can be more challenging to get in a vegan or vegetarian diet or in a more plant-based diet. Uh, iron um, is another really key nutrient that can be very difficult for us to get enough of in those kinds of diets. And B12 is the is the third one. Um, so those are the three things that I'm thinking a lot of when I have patients, especially new patients who are coming in and telling me, you know, I want to move or I'm moving towards more of a plant-based diet. Uh, what do I need to know and what's important? Um, and B12, to focus in on that a little bit today, um, is really important because I think in conventional medicine, particularly in Canada, but this goes for many of the certainly first world countries uh, around the world, um, part of the issue here with B12 is a misunderstanding or or just a lack of knowledge about and understanding about what optimal levels of B12 are relative to what is normal. Um, and so, you know, kind of tailing off of that, um, an important thing that I say on a really regular basis when it comes to lab tests especially, is that what is normal or what occurs very frequently or what we see very normally does not necessarily mean healthy. Um, normal does not equal healthy um, all the time. Um, and so that's a really, this is a really key factor when it comes to B12 because in Canada, our range for B12, let's just forget units for a minute here, um, but our range uh, for B12 goes from about 150 units all the way up to 650. Um, and that seems like a really big range. And honestly, most people who are uh, walking around doing okay um, are going and not drastically sick are going to be well within that range. Uh, in fact, I say the majority of my patients who come back who are not supplementing or getting B12 injections um, are uh, in the neighborhood of around 300 to 450 um, for their B12 limits uh, or B12 measures. Here's the problem. First of all, around the world, um, the range for B12, for instance, in Japan and some European countries, starts at about 550 and it goes all the way up to 1300. Um, so around the world, there is discrepancy about what is considered normal, healthy, or optimal B12 levels. In my experience, most people do their best when their B12 levels are at the high end of the Canadian range, so 500 and higher, and really typically pushing 600. Um, and I think that I have an understanding of why that is. I think a lot of that has to do with not just absorption of B12, but transport into tissues. Um, and I'm going to talk more about that um, in Resilience Unbound uh, in our uh, subscription group. So if you're interested in that, um, you can check out the bio for, for more detail there. Um, so that is an important piece that we'll get into in a little bit more detail. Um, but I think the range in Canada is just stupid, uh, is, is first, is the first thing. Um, it's actually fairly well documented that even normal, healthy people who have B12 levels below about 350 can exhibit some mild symptoms of B12 deficiency. And those overt symptoms of B12 deficiency um, are typically neurological. Um, you might get numbness and tingling, particularly um, in the extremities, so fingers, uh, toes, legs, uh, hands, arms. Um, we may get oral uh, numbness or, or paresthesia, uh, so numbness or tingling. Um, muscle weakness, um, certainly anxiousness or depression, for that matter, anxiety and depression, mood disorders. Um, and what we commonly call burnout. Um, so lowered energy, lowered motivation, lower libido, poor focus and memory and concentration. All of these things can be 
uh, symptoms of B12 deficiency. Now, those can also be symptoms of lots of other things going on, and there can be a lot of uh, combined nutrient deficiencies, especially that can com um, uh, lead to those symptoms, iron and protein being, you know, chief amongst those, particularly because of these dietary changes I mentioned earlier, um, that often lead to B12 deficiencies um, or insufficiencies, I should say. So if we know that there are some people who don't do well with B12 levels below 350, like why don't we raise the range to at least reflect that? Um, I would likely, like uh, the way that I think about B12 levels in my practice is assuming that people are not supplementing with uh, high dose uh, oral supplements or getting B12 injections in the last five weeks or so. We need about a five week washout for, B for measuring B12 in the blood. Um, if you've got a blood test result and you are below 500, I'm likely to suggest a B12 uh, injection for you um, to see if you notice a difference. Because people who are uh, functionally insufficient, as I'll say, so below 500, um, but that's not enough for them, they will notice the difference when you give them a, a B12 shot. Um, so that's, you know, I, I guess the big thing that I wanted to, to share with most people is that that range for B12 is really not good. Um, and while in Canada, our typical range that we see on our blood work results from our labs is around 150 to 650, we should probably be striving for the top end of that range and recognize that around the world, other countries and many other integrative doctors around the world would agree um, that typically we should be expecting and targeting over 500 or 600 for our B12 levels um, when it comes to optimization. Um, again, energy, focus, memory, concentration, burnout, um, libido, uh, if I didn't mention it earlier as well, anxiety, depression, um, you know, paresthesia, numbness, tingling, um, all sorts of those really weird symptoms that sometimes uh, can come up. And a lot of conventional doctors are saying, well, it can't be B12 because you would have to be strikingly deficient below 150 for us to expect those kinds of signs or symptoms. And that's just in my practice, I have seen that to not be true. Um, optimization of B12 is a really important component um, to um, you know, working with the kinds of patients that I do, um, people who are trying to be better every day and keep their energy levels and their motivation levels and their focus and their brain power um, at the highest that they possibly can. Um, so that's a little bit of a, I guess, teaser uh, and primer for B12. Um, love to hear if you guys have any specific questions. Uh, as I said, in our uh, subscription group in Resilience Unbound, we'll talk about uh, a bit more about plant-based diets and um, certainly about B12 and protein and iron. Uh, but I'm also going to go into more detail about the TCN2 gene um, and the FUT2 gene, which have a lot to do not just with absorption of B12, um, but how we are able to transport it and utilize it throughout our body, which I think is a really huge factor in why some people need higher levels of B12 um, in the blood. And so your blood levels will be higher than, the, uh, than other people who are doing just fine, but you need that based on your genetics. Genetics. And we can find that stuff out now that we've got access to our uh, functional genetic tests. Um, I'll also go into talking about how to pick a good B vitamin, and that would apply to a good multivitamin as well. The B vitamins and B12 and the form of those B vitamins is really important for many people, especially when we know their functional genetic makeup, um, because there are certain forms that are going to be more or less useful, or in some cases may actually do you harm if you're taking those forms of B vitamins. Um, so we don't want to be wasting our money on multivitamins that are out there with crappy forms of B vitamins. Um, so let's make sure we know that uh, information. And last Lastly, we'll talk a little bit about injections versus, versus oral supplementation.